Over the summer, I worked on my biggest, most professional project yet, which was a little documentary short about how my small little town was affected by the pandemic. If you're watching this, you've probably already seen that documentary, and if you haven't, you should probably pause this and go ahead and watch that. Or you can watch that after you watch this. I don't know. Do whatever you want. In this behind the scenes little vlog video, I'm going to talk about why I made the documentary and go through the process of what I went through to actually make it. First off, I want to talk about why I made this little documentary. At the beginning of the year, for my New Year's resolutions, I made a couple of writing goals and a couple of filmmaking goals. And one of those filmmaking goals was to make a documentary over the summer about my favorite local movie theater, which I absolutely love. And it's fairly new. It's only been around for three or so years. But then COVID happened. And that kind of put a little fork in my plans because with everything being shut down, I wouldn't be able to get any footage or anything of the actual theater operating. And it wouldn't be much of a documentary about a movie theater if there's nothing about the movie theater actually running. The documentary was supposed to be about how great the movie theater is. And if it's shut down, I can't really do a story about that. Quick change of plans at the beginning of June, I still very much wanted to do a documentary and not wanting to give up. I shifted my plans from being about the history of the movie theater to be more about how the movie theater was impacted by the pandemic, which slowly evolved into how all the local businesses were impacted. I'm not the only one affected. You know, you, you can't take it personal because it's uh, everybody, so. I always wanted this to be another step forward in my filmmaking career and skill set. And I wanted it to be a more professional short than I've done before. And so for this one, I knew from the back I didn't want it to be a vlog. You know, I didn't want it to feel like a vlog. I didn't want it to be footage with me talking over it and then having some selfie footage of me talking about it. I didn't want to make a vlog. I wanted to make a legit, very professional documentary where the narrative and the whole voiceover and everything is coming from the actual interviewees themselves and their dialogue kind of interwoven and in telling the story. I actually had some practice doing this in film school. Even though I knew how I wanted to shoot this, the first step in getting footage from interviewers is actually contacting the interviewees. That's not so much of a big deal and it's it really isn't. And people do it all the time. Filmmakers constantly email and reach out and network. But I'm sure, and I don't feel like most people don't talk about this, but like the very, very first time you do it, it's probably very scary. You know, the first step in anything is the hardest. And so for me, that very first time contacting someone who wasn't a friend or family member and asking them to be an interviewee and if I could do a documentary about them and film them was very scary and nerve wracking. What do I say? What do I type up? How do I ask them? How do you ask someone, hey, can I make a documentary about you? Just fucking do it. They'll either say yes or no. You gotta, you gotta push through. You know, I, I knew... I, I knew even when I was doing it that the first time was always going to be the hardest. But all the other times I contact people, it won't be as bad. It'll be easier. And it definitely was. Should I start the email off with howdy? Is that weird? Is that cheesy? Is that weird if I say howdy? Even though I've been saying it. Fuck it. Fuck it. You're overthinking this. Howdy. I don't know. It was very scary sending out the first email. But your boy did it. I got a yes. Okay, so she responded to that last email I sent and asked her and so we're set to film Wednesday morning crazy idea I was brainstorming who else I could interview for this documentary and I thought what if I emailed and interviewed the freaking mayor of the town that'd be crazy that'd be a big contact take one let's go get this bread wait can I talk you just you, like you're gonna cut this up though right Hello. I should be at work right now. Is it windy enough to use the button? I don't think it's that windy. Yeah. Because I only have two games in my PS4. The extra footage. I'm not this one. Do businesses as well. Um, I'm a teacher at 
Shoot went pretty well. Almost done. She left. She had to go meet someone, and now we're here getting B-roll. How did you enjoy your experience so I, far? I want to go eat. I'm hungry. I've been holding up. What is it? Boom pole. Shotgun Boom mic. Pole for the last four hours, standing in the same spot. <laughs> I want food. After we actually did that first interview, I was just on a roll, gathering as much footage as I could. Like once we actually started filming, it was all downhill, uphill. It was all straight, straight away from there. This footage looks fucking terrible. I would spend entire days just getting B-roll, just spending, spending hours getting one shot that a lot of the times they didn't even make it into the cut. This downtown is completely empty at 1 a.m. midnight, which is to be expected of an incredibly small town with nothing going on on the phone. And you can't really see the whole thing either. I did actually end up scheduling a meeting with the mayor. My name's Annie Rodriguez. I'm the mayor of the city of Yoakum. Am I supposed to be looking at that? You can, you can look, look at, look at you yeah. good. Better. Okay. Yeah. You want to start again? So, so yeah. ready to do. Okay. I'm very glad I did because I feel like that interview added a very, very crucial layer onto this documentary. So it kind of turned into the A plot, which is the central focus was the movie theater. And then the B plot was the thing that, exp the world behind it. We get a sense that like, okay, that's not the only business that's going through this, the rest of the town is being affected. And I feel like without the interview from the mayor, without that context, this it wouldn't have worked as well. So I'm really glad I ended up getting that that interview. You know, the more footage I got, the more I traveled around and filmed stuff and everything, the more possibilities I had for what this documentary could become. Eventually, summer ended, and so I needed to start packing and getting ready to head back to Austin to go to film school. So that's a good segue into the editing process. Take one. As you may or may not know, editing a documentary is a lot more different than editing a narrative. Uh, funny enough, I actually learned that from doing these vlog videos. I know it sounds weird, you know, you learn documentary editing from doing vlogs. Well, yeah, actually. Uh, when I was younger, I always thought people who did vlogs were like, making easy videos, there was no challenge in them, which is why back when I started making behind the scenes vlog videos, because I thought they were gonna be easy things to put together. And I very quickly learned that they are not. Vlogs have their own challenges, they have their own skill set. And for some reason it didn't click until way later that, oh, vlogs would fit into the documentary category. You're essentially making a documentary about your life. Because prior to doing the vlogs, I was just doing narrative and I was writing what was going to happen. I was storyboarding shots and angles that I wanted to film. And then on shooting, I would shoot the exact angles that I drew in the storyboards. And so when I was editing it, I was just following the storyboards, which the storyboards were just following the script. And in vlogs and in every documentary stuff I've done since then, it's very much the opposite, you know. You can go out and start shooting something with the intent of what you want the focus to be about. But when you're filming, you just try to get as much as you possibly can. And then while you're in it, you may or may not get ideas for other places you can take this story into. And so you're just trying to grab as much as you possibly can. Because a lot of it you may not use, a lot of it you might. And you may end up doing something completely different than you did before. And the writing... It feels like it's a reverse from the narrative because when you're doing narrative, you write the script and then you shoot it. But with documentary, you shoot first as much as you can and you take what you have and you try to make a story from that. So when you're in narrative, you write whatever you want to do and then you try to shoot that. In documentary, you've shot as much as you can and then you take what you shot and you try to find a way to force that together into a cohesive story. It was a very long process. I don't. I won't get too into it, but it was. I would 
play back the entire interview for each, making notes about what they said at specific points. And then while I was editing, I'd go over the notes and seeing, okay, this kind of leads into that. And I had to find a way to make a story out of it. The other key editing things I've done were as more aesthetic things than anything. Like the intro, like the, that's like a throwback to like a 16 millimeter nostalgic film. You know, I wanted the point of this doc to be, you know, summer of 2020 in Yoakum, Texas. And so I wanted to use footage of what summer is usually like in this small town. And I think that old school film vibe really added a nostalgic layer to it. As of right now, it's the most professional thing I've done. It, it really, really stretched my skill set in terms of what I know I can do. But yeah, that's that's the story of how I made this documentary short. I hope you enjoyed the documentary. I hope you enjoy this behind the scenes. Uh, if you have any questions, I guess you know, you can comment. I don't know. I never know how to end these things. Uh, subscribe to my OnlyFans. I don't know. Do that. You know, actually, I'm not joking. I could use it. I need to pay my college tuition. Yeah. Thank you.